suppose you're given something like this to find the vertex, put in standard form, all that good stuff. Now, don't try and copy this down because I'm going to go too fast. Watch the video maybe later. So we'll replace f of x by y. I'll move 49 to the other side. I just start going through these things out of habit. I factor out the 4 because I know I need to complete the square. And I want a 1 in front of my x squared term. Great. I got a minus 49 over here. Now, to complete the square, you take half of this middle number. So that's half of negative 7. That gives you negative 7 over 2. That's kind of like the first step. The second step is to do what with this number? Square it. And when I square it, I square the numerator and I square the denominator. I'll do the denominator, you do the numerator. What do we get here? 49. Good. So I'm going to put 49 over 4 in here. Now, I better not put 49 over 4 over here because that would be wrong. I've really changed the right-hand side by four times that much. Four times this is what? 196. 196 divided by four is 49. So oddly enough, the 49 here and the 49 here cancel. And on the right-hand side, this, that negative seven halves is what goes in here. So it's really y equals four times x minus seven half squared. So, hey, there's my vertex, great. But I could have saved myself a lot of work. Now, you have to be a little bit conscientious in doing this, but if you, if you look at the graph and it does something kind of funky, notice, notice there's only one solution, one root of the problem, uh, one place where it crosses the x-axis. So let's take a look at its graph. It's right here. It only touches it once. If it has this interesting behavior where it only touches once, then there's something else special going on. That special thing comes by looking at this. If you were to square out a minus b, you might recognize a pattern here. It turns into a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. The end terms are perfect squares. That's what should catch your attention. Let's take a look at this. Well, 49 is a perfect square, right? I mean, that's just 7 squared. No big deal there. But how about the other term? Is that a perfect square? What do I square to get 4? 2. What do I square to get this? X. So what you want to do is see, does the middle term line up? If you take negative 2 times 2x times 7 and get the middle term, in this case we do, hey, that means that this can be factored. It's a perfect square. It's 2x minus 7 squared. So if you see the end terms are perfect squares, then see if it can't factor as maybe you know, a minus b squared or a plus b squared would be pretty sim pretty similar as just a positive here. But if these end terms are squared, check to see that the middle term fits this. In fact, if you get this kind of a nice bouncing behavior off the x-axis where the graph just touches the x-axis once, then chances are exactly what you have is a nice perfect square trinomial there. So you don't have to do all that crazy factoring um, and completing the square. You can just say, all right, well, that's you know 2x minus 7 squared. You can get anything from here now. Um, if you set that equal to 0, well, that's either 2x minus 7 equals 0 or 2x minus 7 equals 0. There's really only one place that that can happen, and that's x equals 7 halves. So. It solves pretty quickly from there, but it's helpful to notice that these two terms are perfect squares. All right, good luck with that. Keep up with the homework and see ya.